Welcome. Welcome to Panama International Church. One more Sunday we have to praise the Lord. Please stand up. Wow. This is an awesome morning. We have some special guests this morning and um, it's going to be, I know it's going to be a great time in the Lord. Let's pray real quick. Father, we ask you that you come in this place, that you inhabit this place. We come here humble and servant, looking for your presence, for your Holy Spirit. We dedicate these hours to you. You're the guest of honor. You're the one we came to praise, Jesus. We love you, we honor you, we praise you. In your name we pray, amen.
que perder Nada hay que esconder La respuesta está en Jesús Es tiempo de demostrar su luz Tu gloria declararé Tu nombre quiero exaltar Para mí todo lo eres tú Eres único mi
moving among his people I want you to close your eyes and think about where you were and what God has done for you in your life and I want you to think about where you are now and where he's taking you because he loves you and he cares for you and if you are lost this morning, we serve a God that leaves the 99 and he comes after you. We serve, a, we serve a God that's coming for those who are sick. Those who have been turned away from society. Those who are heavy laden. Those who are in pain. Those who don't know where the next meal is coming from, that's the God that we serve, a God of mercy and a God of love. And when you think that God has forgotten about you, I want to tell you that the Bible says that he's with you. The fact that you're going through a situation in your life right now doesn't mean that God has abandoned you. Because if he had turned his back on you, you wouldn't be here or at home. But the fact that you're here, the fact that in spite of what you're going through, you're still standing. He's with you. For the Bible says that when the angel of the Lord showed up to Gideon, Gideon was afraid. Because he had seen the angel of the Lord face to face. You did not come here to see a man. You came here to have an encounter with the eternal God. And the same words that he told Gideon, he said, do not be afraid. Peace be with you. Peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is in the midst of trouble. You have the Prince of Peace that overcame and you can overcome 
So praise his name today and give him glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we love you. That is not just a song. We love you, Lord. And we thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. We came here to worship you, Lord. We came here to hear a word from you, Lord. We came here to receive every single thing that you have in store for us, Lord. And we came here to give with an attitude of gratitude because we understand what you have done for us. So we love you and we thank you, Jesus. Have your way in this place, Holy Spirit. Move like you never moved before in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I don't think there's enough words in the dictionary to, to combine to describe the God that we serve. It makes no sense when I think about the God that created the universe and each and every one of us made his way down here to earth, made himself a man. Don't make any sense. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we want to welcome those of you that are here for the very first time. This is your house. We love you. We thank God for you. Those that are here present and those that are at home watching, we pray that the Lord will have his way in your heart. And please know, the first time you come, you're a visitor, but then after that, you're family. So we just want to welcome you. These letters are a little small, so if, <laughs> if I have a hard time, please forgive me. First of all, we want to, you know, give you guys some announcements on some of the activities and the things that are happening here at Paint. Uh, the water baptism service uh, will be September 12th after the service. Please remember also to um, attend the baptism classes at 9.30 a.m. Um, please sign up online for that. We want to make sure that everybody goes online and we have the right amount of, you know, people and everything that we need to set up to make sure that you guys um, receive what you need. Also, uh, the worship editions. If you can uh, play an instrument or sing... Auditions will be Thursday, September 16 at 5 p.m. So those of you who God is gifted to, to, to sing and to play an instrument, please make sure that you come on Thursday, the 16th at 5 p.m., please. Um, those of you that know we're going to two services on the 19th. The first service is at 9 a.m. and the second service is at 11 uh, we have to sign up online, please, because we want to make sure that we have the right, the right amount of things set up to make sure everything goes in order. How many of you know that God is a God of order? Amen? Amen. Amen. And also the life groups. Uh, we want to encourage you guys to stay connected and sign up to one of our life groups. Um, life group has been a blessing for me. You know, a lot of times you can't connect with people on a personal basis here at church. But during a life group, we can connect, we can share stories, we can minister to people, and we can, you know, grow together. So I just want to encourage each and every one of you to join um, a life group. Uh, this semester, it will start on Monday, September 20th. So please sign up at paintchurch.com. It's very important. I'd like to call the, the ushers up, please. Now, worship, a lot of times... We restrict it to a song. But worship is a lifestyle. Worship is singing. Worship is what we say. Worship is what we do. And worship is what we give. So even in the area of giving, we need to worship God. Here at Paint, we don't manipulate or force anybody to give. But we do let you know that the issue of the heart is the heart of the issue. And if we're having a hard time giving here, a lot of times we have a hard time giving here. So we want to encourage you guys to be faithful to the Lord the same way God has been faithful to us. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we love you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord, because we recognize that the air that we breathe 
the clothes that we wear, the family that we have, the cars that we drive, everything that we have, Lord, belongs to you. So we want to praise you, Lord, and lift your name up high and thank you for every single thing we receive from you. But we also want to take the time, Lord, to let you know how thankful we are with our giving, with the giving of our finances, our money, but also the giving of our time and having the right attitude, Lord, as we're doing this, Lord. So we pray that you bless the tithes and the offerings. In Jesus' name, we bless you, Lord. Amen. Hi, Pay family. How are you all? This is time to collect tithes and offerings. Remember, you can always do a wire transfer to our bank account. This is the number of our bank account, and you are good to go. This is a quick summary of all the announcements we have for September. First, on September 12th, is Baptism Sunday. So if you want to get baptized, this is your moment. Go into our website, paintchurch.com. You're going to see a tab that says Water Baptism. Register and you're good to go. Remember, there's a class at 9.30 a.m. that same Sunday. It's a quick class and you're going to receive a t-shirt so that you can get baptized. Also, September 16th, if you're good, playing the drums, singing, playing the guitar, the bass, you name it. This is the moment you, were, you have been waiting for. Worship auditions, September 16th, that's a Thursday, here at the church. So you can see the announcement right here with all the information, September 16th, worship auditions. Also, September 19th, we're gonna go to two services. Woo, praise God, we have a service at 9 a.m. and a service at 11 a.m. You will be able to select which service you want to go. If it's the 11 a.m. or if the 9 a.m., you decide, but as of September 19, that's gonna be two services. Also, September 20, life groups. We begin our life groups. We have tons of life, of life groups to choose from. We have over 15 life groups. So if you wanna be part of a life group, go into our website. There is a tab under connect that says life groups. There you're gonna be able to see all the different life groups and be part of the one you want to select. These are all the announcements and see you next Sunday. Good morning. Praise the Lord. God is so good. Welcome once again to Panama International Church, and we are so glad that you are here. What a blessing. We want to also welcome our live stream family again, and they're just as much a part of this church as anyone else. And We say thank you. Well, I want to just talk for a moment about life groups. Today, we opened up our life groups for sign-ups and we want you to go, everyone should be in a life group. And we've got many, many new people, so I want to try to explain what a life group is. A life group is essential. It's the DNA of our church here. It's usually between 8 and 15 people, and it's a group that meets during the week between an hour and an hour and a half to grow spiritually together, to connect relationally, to share to care, to pray for one another, and just to be accountable. It's a great way. We have different life groups. We're starting a new life group for marrieds. Amen? Are we awake this morning? <laughs> We're starting a new life group for men, and we've got two great leaders in that life group, and it's going to be great. We had, like, we averaged about 150 adults last semester attending every week in our life groups. And so this is a big thing in our church. I want to explain to you how to go and sign up. It's very, it's a little, not that easy, but it's easy. It's, it's pretty easy. So you go to our website, paintchurch.com. You go up to the top where it says life groups. Click on there. Then it will say, you scroll down a little bit, it will say find a life group. You'll click that on and you'll see every life group that our church has. There, you're able to click on the group that you're interested in. There's a description. It tells you what language that the life group is in. 
It tells you what days it meets. It tells you what the theme is. And it gives you all the information. You hit the join button and it will ask for your email. Last semester we had a problem. People would put in their email and then they would just leave and they weren't signed up. Once you put your email in, it will send you a code, a six-digit code to your email. You have to place that code back into, it will come up another page, and you, you put in the code, and then it will ask for your name. You write your name, and it will say, do you want to join this life group? And you wave up your hand, you say, glory to God, yes, I do. And you join, and you are in, and your life group leader will get connected with you, and it will be great. I want to say... Also, every year, people, because they enrolled in a group last semester, they think maybe they don't have to enroll again this semester. And the thing is, we wipe out all the roles, and so you'll need to re-enroll even if you're attending the same life group. All righty. Are you ready for life groups? It is going to be great. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. He's doing the work. His spirit is moving. And we say glory to God. Well, before I introduce our guest speakers today, and we are sure we praise the Lord that they're here, we are receiving new members into the body. And we have 19 new members, and we just say glory to God. Praise the Lord. We just got done with next steps. And so, praise, it's God. It's God, and God is doing a mighty work. As I call your name, we want to invite you to come up. And if you want to say amen or praise the Lord, you feel free. You're in the house of the Lord. There's, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen? And so you just feel free to say amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah, glory to God. All right. Ana Jurado. Amen. Carlos, Carlos Cohen. Carlos, my good friend, where are you? Hey, man, I love Carlos. He was in the life group that I taught last semester, so, <laughs> and his wife. Amen. Anibal Medi. Hey, man. Astrid Cuevas. Hey, man. Javier Gutierrez. And this is an amazing name right here, because it's the name of my wife. Carla Torraza. <laughs> All right. Amen. Yesi Garcia. Amen. Pastor Eduardo's parents and Juan D. Amen. Luz Mague. Luz Mague. Rinaldo Melendez. Rinaldo. Vicente Mague, Norelvis Alonso, Amen, Norvel, Valeria Pomares, Valeria Pomares, Dawood Nas Nasser, Dawood Nasser, not here, okay. Uh, yeah, if we can move down. Saman Nasser. Oh, here comes Dawood. Amen. Saman y also Samu, Samuble. Samuble Nasser. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank, thank God. Franklin Gomez. Amen. Kenya Davis. Kenya Davis, Jose Almenego, Almengor, amen, that's one happy fellow right there, and Patricia Borero, amen, well, let's extend our hands and let's say a prayer over these dear members, and we just are so thankful to God, let's extend our hands and let's pray, Father God, we thank you for these new members. God, we pray that we would be a blessing to them, that we would love them, that we would welcome them into this body. And we thank you, God, that they're here. We pray, God, that you would set them on fire, on fire to serve, on fire to live for you. And God, we just want to... 
be not just be the church, but we want to just when we go out of this place, Lord, that we pray that they would know that they are part of the paint family. And we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you for the members in particular. And Lord, we know that you said that you place the members in the body as it pleases you. And so it pleased you today to put these members in this body. And we love them, and we welcome them, and we say glory to your name. We pray it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Give them a hand. You can be seated. Amen, our new members. Wow. Well, some of you, most of you have been here for a long time. You know Jay and Nancy Dickerson. They were here just a while back. And they are the area directors for Assemblies of God Missions of Central America. And so they are working in coordination with our board to find the new lead pastor. And we need to continue to pray and pray and pray and pray without ceasing, right? Because God has a person, a family that he wants to bring here. And so we pray and we thank God that he is working. Jay and Nancy, we invite you to come and we love you and we appreciate you being here. Well, good morning. It is such a treat. Thank you, Brother Paul and Carla, for the, for the pastoring you're doing, leadership board. And um, what a great day, the time, the presence of the Lord. And seeing all these, was it 19 people who were joining? Well, you know, God's doing something. And we're just excited about, about the future, but we're also excited about right now. I love the songs we sang of the presence of the Lord. And I, I believe that he's here today. I believe he's here. He has a word for each of us, and he has something to share. I mean, he's already displayed his presence through time of worship. Haven't you sensed his moving in a powerful way? Amen. Thank you. I don't know what you come with today. I don't know what heaviness, or or maybe you're in a time of great joy. Well, let's rejoice together. Or if you're one who's, who's, there's some heaviness, our prayer is today that God will minister to you and just bring you just a sense of, of peace and joy and honor. So it's a great day being with you. I'll let you talk before I keep going, baby. <laughs> I was looking on here at the mute button, and I'm like, oh, maybe I need that for his mic. Oh. No, I'm teasing. It is an honor to be here, and to see you all here this morning is just incredible. And I know that there are many out there that are joining us on Facebook, and what a wonderful opportunity to experience the presence of God in this place today. Right. And I have been praying, even through prayer, while we were um, praising the Lord. I said, Lord, even those that are at home, let the Holy Spirit fill that room where they are. Amen. And let them experience the same precious presence of God that we get to, pray, that we get to experience here. Well, we thought we've been praying this week about our time together. And we, just so you know, um, we as area directors, we have seven countries where we have missionaries. Um, we have about 100 something missionaries. And Saturday is the day we always pray for Panama. And, and the first thing we pray for is we're praying for Panama's paint church and for all, all of you. So you're in our prayers. Right. We're thinking about you more than just Saturdays, but every, every Saturday we focus on, on you. And we've been praying for, well, Lord, what do you want us? to share today because you have great preaching. You have, you have a great history. And as we were preparing, Nancy and I always, we, we always share together. Um, and the Lord has given us some things to share today. And we hope it's an encouragement. We don't have an answer for all the problems you're facing, but we know the one who does have the answer for whatever you're facing. I want to encourage you today. Don't look to man. Don't look to me. Don't look to Nancy, but look to Jesus. Absolutely. And keep your eyes focused on him. I'm not going to tell you that it's not going to be difficult. We have faced the weirdest year and a half ever. I mean, historically. And if we look back to March or February of last year, we would have thought for sure everything would be over. I mean, who thought we'd be coming to church with masks on? Who thought we'd be going to the bank with masks on and not be put in jail? <laughs> and some, what I've been realizing is, For much of this time, we've been thinking about, well, when it ends, when it ends. 
And when we live that way, we miss what God wants to do with us right now. Amen. And so as we were thinking about this today, this week, we were thinking about the word we want to share is the word wait. Jesus was near the end of his time on the earth. And the disciples were concerned about him setting up his kingdom in the way they thought it should. I mean, they thought he was coming with power. He was going to straighten everybody out. and Everything was going to be great. Sometimes we feel that same way, don't we? Jesus, just make it all go away. And so we see Jesus speaking to them. And if you read the book of Luke and Acts, they were both written by the physician Luke, Dr. Luke. And it's actually, it's better to read them together, part one and part two. Because they just go together so well. I didn't design the Bible, but if I had done it, I would have gone you know, Matthew, Mark, John, Luke, Acts. But, you know, they didn't ask my opinion. But what I'm saying is I'd read them, when I'm reading through several times a year, I read them together. And at the end of Luke chapter 24, if we can have that, that verse up there, Luke 24, 49 says this. The, the disciples were saying, okay, what now? Okay, Jesus had died. He'd been crucified. He rose again. And he was spending 40 days with them. And so they kept asking questions. What now? When will this end? When will you come in power? But Jesus said, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. What Jesus said, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait. But wait. So the story goes on, and we turn over to Acts chapter 1, and we see that Jesus was near the end of the 40 days before he was going to be ascended. And he was teaching them about the kingdom. I would love to have been with them those 40 days. I mean, I, their minds had been blown. I'm not sure how you try. I'm thinking of the, of the one interpreting. How would you say that? Explotó su cabeza? No, that, I mean, their, their paradigms had shifted. Everything had changed. And he was teaching them about the kingdom, but they were still missing it. So we're going to read Acts chapter 1, 1 to 8, and if you have it in Spanish, the hechos uno, uno a ocho. But in, the, in my former book, this is Luke writing. He wrote the book to Theophilus. He said, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. But wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and said and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Is it now, is it tomorrow that the pandemic ends? He said, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit Amen. comes on you. Amen. And you will be my witnesses. Where? In Jerusalem? And in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. The disciples were walking with Jesus and, and they were learning from him. And he said to them, they, you know, about the kingdom. Well, they said, now, is it now, Lord, that you're going to set up your kingdom? Everything's going to change? And Jesus didn't answer their question. He says, that's the Father's business. But you wait. You wait for what the Lord has for you. When we think of the time, and we, we'd like to know, we, we think when things go back to normal, or, or what it, I don't know what that's going to look like. But those who are waiting to live until the pandemic ends are missing what God has for them right now. Amen. Amen. And what Amen. Jesus was saying to them, in this time, wait in my presence and receive what I have for you so that you can do ministry in my power, in my strength, and not be bound. We're right now in the wait mode. But what are you doing in the wait mode? Now see, we're going to be talking about being and doing because 
you know, we, we, we talk about, we call ourselves human beings, seres humanos. But really we're human doings, aren't we? We are not comfortable with being. And Jesus was telling his disciples, don't worry about the kingdom. Worry about being. Well, during this, this time of, of, of weirdness, the Lord gave Nancy a, a word of sharing about the word obscurity. You know, obscurity, it's not a word that I had thought a whole lot about, but when I'm like, I want to know the definition. What does obscurity mean? And obscurity, I had to go to good old um, Webster's Dictionary and see what they had to say about it. And obscurity is the state of being unknown or forgotten, an uncertainty of meaning or importance that can bring darkness, dimness, and distinctness. Now, does that sound like anything that you guys have gone through in the last year and a half? It, I have felt that way at times. Does anybody know what's really going on? Does anybody know where I am? What's going to happen tomorrow? What are we going to do? Obscurity. We don't like obscurity. When I think of obscurity during these times of crisis, it can be overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. Right. In ministry, what are we going to do? How are we going to take care of our missionaries? I mean, look at all they're doing. We do, and we do, and we do. And, and we've got churches, and we've got schools, and we've got Bible schools, and we've got feeding programs. And there's so much going on, and, and we've got to do. You guys have been through it. You guys have jobs that have been kind of wobbly. You've gone online. You're doing things differently. You, you've, you're, you're thinking about tomorrow. We've all been affected by Rona. Every one of us knows someone either in our family or around us. You can't get away from that. And we feel this dimness. This obscurity, because we don't always understand what's going on. One day I was, I was taking a jog, and I, I thought, I'm just going to turn on podcasts. And so I listened to a podcast called um, Fight, Hustle, In Hurry. And I, I, I listened to this one, and it just happened to come on episode 8, which was entitled Obscurity. And I thought, okay, Lord, you've got my attention here. You know, Jeff Bethke and, and John Mark Comer are the ones who were, were, um, were doing this, this podcast. And they began to talk about Jesus' life. Have you ever thought about his timeline? We see that he was born. We see about him until he was two years old or so. Went to Egypt. Then he came back. Then we don't hear anything. And then he goes with his family to the, to the temple to, to sacrifice. And, and then they get worried. They come looking for him. And he's taken back home. We don't hear anything else until he's baptized. His cousin baptizes him. And after this baptism, he goes into the wilderness. Talk about obscurity. Mic up. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> he goes into obscurity. He goes into, he goes into the wilderness. 40 days and 40 nights. He doesn't eat anything. He doesn't drink anything. He's there. And it's a time of preparation. We don't always want to wait and go into a time of absolute not knowing what's going on. But at this time... God was working in him, preparing him, because he comes out, his first encounters with the enemy, Satan's trying to tempt him, and he, he leaves that situation and goes right into ministry. We see three years that he's, he's just winning the world, but in that time, what does he do? You see, all he gets away to be with his father. He gets away to be with his father. Yeah, I think sometimes we forget, we, we see all the miracles, mm -hmm. but in his culture, from one miracle to another, he was always walking. Yep. There was always time away. We see what he did, but we miss, don't, don't we yeah, miss that the time do. When, he's, when he's away? We do, and those times were so important because he needed to be refreshed. That's right. 
and then he's crucified. Wow. Wow. His life, we can learn so much just from that short time and how he lived his life. What was important to him? The podcasters mentioned this book, The Hidden Life of Trees, and I've got to admit it's not one I would immediately go to the library and look for. But it was very interesting because in this book, it includes two distinct themes. One is trees and their growth over many years, and the other one is the sensitivity and beauty of the ecosystem. <clears throat> the older trees form the crown, and you, you, if you've been to the jungle, to the forest, You've looked at a mountain, you've seen these beautiful trees and all this great growth at the top. They're beautiful and green. But what you don't see is what's happening underneath. Because underneath, at the bottom of the forest, the jungle, are these little trees that are growing up. But there's a problem. They're not getting any sunlight because the canopy, the, uh, the big trees, they're taking all the sunlight. So any little bit of energy that these trees are getting, they're using to build their core. Their, the core, the foundation of these trees is being strengthened during this time. Their bark is getting thicker. Every now and then a big tree will age out and it'll die and, and one of these little trees goes shooting up because it's getting all the sunshine. But what happens? The foundation has not been firmly set. The core is not strong enough to support it, and it falls. It, it's broken. And it's, it's this continuous, beautiful system that God created. But what I love is these ones at the bottom, these little, weak, fragile trees, they know the importance of building the core so that when there is sunshine and they start to grow, they have strength to be able to maintain and stand strong. I think about this for us. What is God doing for us right now? What are we doing? Are we looking at this time and going, wow, I've got time I can spend with Jesus today. I've got a little bit extra time and I can grow my core are we taking advantage of that time? You know, while the Bible describes the wilderness as a place of danger, temptation, and chaos, it's also a place of solitude, nourishment, and revelation. Wow, did you ever think about that? There is a time when we're quiet and we're still. It might seem like a wilderness time. You think of Jesus when he went into the wilderness. He was tempted when he came out. But because of the cord that was grown, that was just getting stronger and stronger while he was in the wilderness, when Satan came to attack him, he didn't go, oh my goodness, okay, yeah, I'll take all of it. Yeah, let me have all of that. I'm just going to bow now and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve you. No. He said, get behind me. You are not greater than the God that I serve. This happened because he'd spent time. He had, he had made sure that that core, that center, was filled with God. Jesus daily got away and spent time with the Lord. Wilderness and obscurity serve as a common metaphor for a space or time of confusion, transition, and growth. This wilderness obscurity experience in the Bible show the Lord's plan for transformation and transition for his followers. Let's look at Moses for a minute. Moses was in the desert taking care of sheep, and God called him, and he went over, and that changed his life forever. That encounter with that burning bush changed his life forever, but it also changed the lives of the children of Israel. That's right. David, David, Moses learned at that time, you know what, I'm going to have to stay close to God to be able to do what he's called me to do. I, I, can't, I can't get away from this. I'm going to have to stay close to God. He spent time daily with God. 
He was leading the children of Israel, and he could not, he couldn't move until he'd heard from the Lord. He wanted to make sure the Lord was that cloud by day and that burning fire by night leading them. And, de- and Moses knew exactly where to go to find his strength. You look at Jesus. Jesus, his wilderness experience. What he would go through. As he got away each day, he gave out and he gave out and he gave out. And when God gives us opportunities to give out, we need to be refilled. That's right. Don't, don't, don't give out yesterday's stuff. You get fresh manna every day so that what you give out is what God has for the people that you're around. Every day we need to get away and be with God. And there is nothing that should take the place. Nothing. We need to make sure that our core, our foundation, everything that God wants to do in us is being fed daily by Him. You know, there have been times during this pandemic that some of us have been working from home or we've, we've been kind of closed in and, and we feel like our sunlight has been diminished a bit because we're inside so much. But I want to tell you something. Even during this time, the sunlight, S-O-N, light, it doesn't change. It can't be diminished when we open up the word, when we pray, when we allow the Lord to be a part of everything that we're doing. Our core is being built. I want to know that when, when whatever happens, happens. Each day, I'm ready to go the distance. Lord, is, what have you got for me today? It's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. It's today. If we keep thinking about, well, what if and when and, oh, when, when I can take the mask off and, oh, when I don't have to do, wash my hands all the time or when I don't have to have my temperature taken, what does it matter? God's giving us great opportunities every day to be with him. Moses said in Exodus 33, 14, if your presence doesn't go with me, God, I don't want to go. And I think that I've learned that even more during this time because I feel like he's given us this opportunity to spend extravagant amounts of time in his presence at a time when I've never had the opportunity when someone says, you can't go to work today, you're going to have to work from home. Yippee! That means I don't have to travel. I can spend more time with the Lord in the morning. This is extravagant time that we can spend with him instead of being the rat race of going back and forth. How many times do we look at the blessings that we've received instead of thinking of the things that we don't have because of what we're going through? I believe that this time really can be seen as a gift. A gift, you say? Yes, I believe it is a gift. I believe that there's been no other time that we have had the opportunity to be able to rest and spend more time with God than we have during this time. God is good. God is good. I don't know what tomorrow brings. But I know that today, he's right here with us. Today, he wants to to pour into us. He wants to strengthen our core. Mm. He wants to give us Mm. fresh manna so that when we have the opportunity to minister to someone, to to, to bump into someone, to to pick up the phone and call someone, what God's going to use, the way he's going to use us, Mm. it's going to be different because we've spent that time with him. I believe that if we take this time of obscurity to prepare and make it a time of significance, then we can be better on the other side of this crisis than when we started. We serve a good God who Mm -hmm. wants to be there for us, who wants to strengthen us, who wants to fill us up. But it's not for us. It's so that we can give out to others. I'm a to-do list person. I'll have to be honest. I like at the end of the day to be able to check things off of the things I've accomplished. But what I'm learning in this time is that I need to be a to-be person. I think of the story of, of the trees, and there's a story of, a, I think it's called the Chinese bamboo tree. 
And that they plant a seedling in the ground and they leave it there and it gets water and gets some sunlight. Mm -hmm. But at first year, nothing happens. And they go back and, did I really plant it there? Is it really there? Second year, they go back and, is it really there? Third year, they go back and it's still nothing. Fourth year, the same. But on the fifth year, something happens spectacular. That little bamboo tree begins to grow. And it's said that it begins to grow, and in six weeks, that bamboo tree is now about 90 feet tall. And you say, oh, the tree grew in six weeks, 90 feet. No, it grew in five years. <clears throat> because five years, it was underground where no one could see it was an obscure time. It was a time where the nutrients, the building up. Maybe right now we're in the ground. We're in the five year, but I got good news for you. The fifth year comes and we get, to, we get to shoot up and we get to see what God has done. But it doesn't happen in a moment. It happens in that foundation time. And are we resisting what the Lord is wanting to do in us because we're so worried about the next thing? The disciples were saying, is it now, Lord? Is it now you're going to set your kingdom? And he said, that's not the right question. I'm reminded of the story in, well, of, the, of the account in Luke chapter 10. Very familiar passage, very short passage. But if it's up there, it says, and Jesus and his disciples were on their way he came to the village where a woman named Martha Mary, uh, Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and said, ask, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are really needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from Amen. her. Amen. And in that story, we see Jesus came to visit his friends, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And he came there, and Mary's gift was hospitality. Her gift was making the food. She was in the kitchen. Jesus comes and all of a sudden, she starts getting busy about stuff because there's work to do. So she says this, and all of a sudden, she looks in there, and there's her sister, Mary, sitting at Jesus' feet. The nerve! She's working like a dog. And Mary's sitting there. And so she comes to Jesus, and, you know, she's probably in a one. She's telling him, to tell her to get up and help me. And one more time, Jesus didn't ask the question, answer the question she asked. He said, Martha, Martha, you're distracted by so many things. Now, don't be too judgy on Martha, because if you don't have Martha, you're going to starve to death. But Martha had to learn something that Mary, Jesus wasn't saying don't work, but he was saying she's chosen the most important thing was sitting at his feet. It does not come naturally to sit at Jesus' feet for most people. I work with a lot of missionaries who are great Marthas. They, I mean, they do phenomenal work. I, I get to watch and see what they get to go and hear the stories and see what they're doing. I'm amazed at the goodness of the Lord and what they're accomplishing. But my prayer is that they, as well as you, would learn that our work needs to come from not our abilities, but our time in the presence of the Amen. Lord. Amen. And I think the Lord has given us favor to learn this truth right now, to learn the word wait, which none of us likes. I do not like to wait in the long line. I do not like to wait at a on traffic light. Oh, Lord, yes. <laughs> I don't like to wait on the tarmac for the airplane to go. But the Lord is speaking to me. Is He speaking to you? It's not so much the time to do. It's the time to be. Amen. So Jesus answered them when they were saying, Is this the time for your kingdom? And He said, Go and wait. 
And they went and waited in the upper room, and then something phenomenal happened. Oh, yeah, here's a good picture. You know, you know, sitting at the feet of Jesus or working for Jesus. We don't stop working, but the working comes after we've been sitting at the feet of Jesus. I guess I'm taking your spot, huh? I'm old old AD. I can't quit moving. May we learn to let everything we do come from the weight. That's right. But as the disciples learn, if you'll move the scripture to Acts chapter, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, we see what happened after they're waiting. They were waiting in, in the upper room. They were waiting for the kingdom. They were waiting for everything to change. And all of a sudden, it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Something like this. I mean, their group, they had 120 people. I don't know how many are here, more than that, but people listening on. But they were together, and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. It was phenomenal. Tongues of fire. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They were waiting and the presence of God came in a phenomenal fashion and something happened. They became empowered for service, but it was not an answer to their question of the kingdom. It was an answer for Jesus. I want to empower you to build my kingdom. I'm not sure what you're waiting for right now, what you think the future is, but I want to tell you something. Jesus wants us to wait in His presence Amen. and receive from Amen. Him and then go out in His power and see His kingdom built in a way that we never expected it to happen. Hallelujah. God doesn't always answer the question the way you want it to be. He answers the way it needs to be answered. Right now, His power is here. He's calling us to be people of waiting. And look what happened. Peter, the man who had, who had become a coward and cussed and lied to this little girl and said, No, I never knew Jesus. He was afraid. But he waited. And in that waiting, empowerment came. And he got up in the middle of thousands who were saying, What is going on? These uneducated people are speaking in language. They're speaking in my home language. And Peter said, this is that. He got up in the middle of thousands right. because of his empowerment for service. And suddenly he realized the answer. This is the answer. Not if the kingdom is coming by power of the government, but it's coming by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that day he preached, you killed Jesus. But God rose him from the grave, and he's alive. And this is what was promised in the book of Joel. This is that. He waited, and he saw the power of God. His life was changed. His trajectory was changed, and all those around him as well. Jerusalem became a hotbed. In fact, there was so much persecution that it would go all over the place. They spread the word of God because they got beat up. Nancy talks about Romans chapter 5, and it says about suffering. It says, there are times of difficulty. I cannot promise you that there will not be difficult times. This week, a friend of mine, 46 years old, passed away, pastoring a church, left a wife and five kids. Is it suffering? Is it difficult? Yes, it is. But this is that. God is going to use that to turn things around. So I'm not sure what you're facing right now. But I trust the one who has called us. Amen. And I trust Amen. his voice. When he tells us to wait, let's wait and see what the Lord Amen. is going to do. Amen. Amen. Peter got up and all of them got up. And God turned things around. Maybe it seems obscure right now. Maybe it seems chaos. And you're asking the Lord, what, what, what? Everything we do must be from His presence. Amen. But let's not ask the wrong question. Move that last slide. The right question isn't, when will this end? But where do I wait and experience His presence? Hallelujah. Amen. It's not Amen. the when, but what now? Amen. What now? You cannot control anything. You can't control the circumstances. You can't control the future. But by being in His presence, you get to see what the Lord's going to do. 
I'm tired of this. But I am so refreshed in the presence of the Lord Amen. that I'm not worried about when it's going to end. I'm just anxious to see what the Lord's going to do. Mm. Can I ask you today to change your question from when to what now, Lord? Does it make sense? Nancy, share what was on your heart this morning. You talked about when we want to pray with people. As, as we were doing this, I thought, you know, ending a service, what do you do? What do you say? <clears throat> and I felt like the Lord said, you know, there are people who feel like they're living in obscurity that are just going, oh, man, one more day. What am I going to do? How am I going to do this? It's not been easy. I realize that. But I also know that there are those who are going, this is exactly what I've been waiting to hear because I'm realizing I need to just really center in on what God has for me. This needs to be my prayer. Yes, Lord, I am here. I am waiting. Do a work in me. And I don't know where you are today. I don't know if you're just really worn out because you've maybe been asking the wrong question. But as we turn that question around this morning, God wants to do something for you. He's here. He wants to give you strength if you feel like you've just, you're worn out. And for those that are like, this is what I've been waiting for, He wants to fill you up. Either way, God is here to fill us up this morning, to do something in us, to get us ready to be empowered for whatever He has. Because he's called each of us. Each of us. Mm -hmm. He's called you to talk to your neighbors and your friends, the people you work with. It's not just the ones that stand up here and speak. He's right. called each of us. And he wants to use each of us. The beauty of it is he loves you. He's called you by name. Because he wants to fill you up and use you. So many times we see in the Word when they had an encounter with the Lord, they built an altar. Built a place, a place of remembrance. And maybe that's what we need to do now. I know we have an altar. I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable. But I want to encourage each of you to make an altar right now. An altar of remembrance that says, I'm not asking when anymore. I'm asking what now, Lord? And so as we close, I'd like to invite you to stand. And I'd like to, levante, pongan de pie, stand up. And I'd like to invite maybe our worship team to come up. And if there are some who are in the midst of the why, when, and you're needing something from the Lord, let this be your day. But whether you come to the front or wherever you stand where you are, in fact, I'm going to turn it back to you, Paul. Because um, Would you make a place, an altar, that changes, said, Lord, change my word from when to what now. And may we truly hear from the presence of the Lord. So as we begin to pray right now, what do you need from Jesus? This is a time of wait. This is a time of seeing His power and His presence. This is a time to receive from Him. Don't miss an opportunity to receive from Jesus. Let's pray. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay and Nancy. We, I want to ask you just to close your eyes and bow your head. And just ask yourself, have I been asking the wrong question? Have I been looking at the when instead of focusing on being in the presence of the Lord, seeking the Lord, seeking His face, asking the Lord for a fresh encounter? Jay and Nancy, they said it so, the Holy Spirit said it through them. We invite you to come forward if the Lord's speaking to your heart and build an altar here or build an altar at your seat and just pour your heart out to God 
I love that what Nancy said. Great opportunities are today, right now, to meet with God. Don't miss the moment. Whether there's COVID or no COVID, there's always things happening in the world. And right now is the moment to connect with God. Would you come as the worship team plays? If the Lord's leading you, come build an altar here, build an altar there. Worship team, lead us, please. that again. Giving me space to 
praise the Lord. Give the Lord praise. Amen. You know, how powerful was that? The message with the song. Wait, lean back. Wait, lean back. Lean back into the Father, into His love. Spend time with Jesus at the feet of Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Lord. We praise you. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for the message today. How you use Jay and Nancy, your servants, to speak to us through the power of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you because we know that your presence is here. And God, we don't want to go forward without your presence. And Lord, I know we face trouble. I know we face trials and tribulations. But God, if you be for us, who can be against us? We stand, Lord, with you. We want to seek you more and more and draw closer. And I pray for these dear people that this week would be a time of drawing near this day, tomorrow, and the day after. Let us lean back completely into you, God. Transform us, fill us, take us, Lord, to greater heights with you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated. We're going to take up an offering for Jay and Nancy. So I'm going to invite the ushers to come up. And what a time in the house of the Lord today. Can you say amen? All right. You know, I was thinking. See, my mind is very spiritual. And I was thinking about going to McDonald's. <laughs> this is just to tell you, I'm being straight up with you. You know, if I went to McDonald's with the family, we would spend $20, 30 $40. And it would be for something that would last me three or four minutes. But I want to tell you, the meal that we had today was so far greater. And I want to just tell you that the Lord is working in this place. We are waiting. We are seeing the Lord move. And we will not stop until Jesus comes again, amen, and raptures us out of here. And we will then be in his presence and the glory of the Lord forever and ever until all of eternity. I want to ask you to just let the Lord work on your heart now. And you give, we're a generous church. And so let's be generous and let's give to the servants of the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray now as we take up this offering. We pray for hearts of generosity. And God, there's no price tag on the word of God. And Lord, I know that Jay and Nancy didn't come here, Lord. They came here to be a blessing because they love us. And we love them and we appreciate them and we want to show an external manifestation of our love and our gratitude and our thankfulness for their willingness to be a blessing to our church. So God, we just pray that your spirit would move. We're not here about pressuring, manipulating. We just ask that the power of the Holy Spirit would move in this moment and that we would give and give unto the Lord and to this Lord's servants. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.
Amen. Well, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. Praise God. We want to ask you, if you need prayer, there's a QR code on the back of the seat there. Scan that with your phone. Or if you're watching us on live stream, there's a QR code that you can scan. And we would invite you to do that. And we, someone will get with you and we will pray with you. We're a praying church. While they were waiting, they were praying. I'll tell you that. You go to Acts 1 and they were praying. And so we want to invite you after the service as well to come up. We'll have our prayer team come up in a moment. I want to just say to the first time visitors, we are honored by your presence here. And we would like to meet you, to take a moment to meet you. If you're visiting for the first time or second time and if you've never gone to our connections room, it's right outside these double doors and then you take a right. And we want to just say hi. We have a special gift we want to give you. And we just want to thank you for being here today. Would you just take a moment and please visit us in the Connections Room if you're visiting for the first time. Also, I want to just encourage you. We're going to go to two services, but that's in two weeks. We're filling up every week on Wednesday. There's people that are not able to sign up with the limitations that we have with our sign up. We can only register a certain amount. So please, registration is open. We'll have one service next week. It opens right now, today. Sign up for when, uh, next Sunday service sooner than later. And then I just want to remind you about baptism. Baptism, we have a video that Pastor Eduardo made. It's on Instagram, and you can check that video out. It explains baptism. And we need to know what baptism is and why we're baptized. Water baptism is very important. And we encourage you to sign up for baptism on our website. Watch that video. And on our website, you can sign up for next Sunday to be water baptized. All righty. Well, praise the Lord. Let me close in prayer. And let's just dismiss our live stream audience and say, God bless you, live stream audience. We're thankful for you. God bless you. You're dismissed live stream. We want to invite the prayer.